It's no secret that Cyberpunk 2.0 and Phantom Liberty will bring drastic changes to the game. This means that pretty much every single mod that you have installed, no matter how small, is at a pretty high risk of breaking, being incompatible, or ruining your game in some way once you update it. To prepare for this, I've found a few different solutions that you can try, and I'll walk you through them now. They involve backing up your game files to a separate drive, downgrading your game back to patch 1.63 if you accidentally updated, and also just straight up purging everything and doing a hard reset. Be sure to reference the video timeline in the description below if you need to jump between different solutions. Before we do anything else, we want to make sure that we create backups of our saves in case things go wrong. So, to get to your saves in Cyberpunk, go to your C drive, go to your users folder, go to your username, and we're going to go down to where the saved games are. Right here, saved game, CD Projekt Red, Cyberpunk, and I have every single save right here. I'm going to control A, control C, and I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop or wherever you feel like is a good place. I'm going to name it like saved games and I'm just going to paste all of those saves into here. Now we have them all backed up. This is for patch 1.63 saves and I'm just going to close out both of these. Another thing that I like doing is disabling automatic updates so that I can mod in peace. If you want to disable automatic updates for Cyberpunk so it doesn't just jump you straight into 2.0, right click your Cyberpunk game in Steam, go to properties and go down to updates right here go to this tab right here and make sure it's selected on only update this game when I launch it. If you have Cyberpunk on GOG Galaxy, it's basically the same process. Go down to where you have your owned games, go and right click on Cyberpunk, go to manage installation, hit configure, and it'll pop up with a menu. Mine is handled by Steam, so I don't have other options, but there should be an installation tab and I'll show on screen right now what it would look like. And all you have to do is turn off auto updates. If you're just trying to get your game to launch but keep coming across this major script error, then I have an easy solution for you. The error usually means that one of your major script mods are out of date. For me, I needed to update my Cyber Engine Tweaks, Tweak XL, and Cyber CMD. These files that I downloaded to update these mods were, of course, for patch 1.63 and not patch 2.0. So maybe not all of these mods will be updated by the time that 2.0 is out, but you should be keeping an eye out for when they do get updated. Updating your mods in Cyberpunk is actually super simple, and I'm going to give you an example of how to do that right now. I'm going to go with Cyber Engine Tweaks because it's a pretty common mod. I'm just going to type in my vortex right here, Cyber. We got Cyber Engine Tweaks right here. I'm going to right click it, go to Open on Nexus Mods. It's going to pull up the page. I'm going to go down to Files. We're going to pretend like this is the 2.0 patch update. In Vortex, I'm just going to remove this entirely. I'm going to remove Mod, Delete, Archive, click Remove and it is now completely removed. We're gonna go back to the Cyber Engine Tweaks page. I'm gonna do a Mod Manager download. Go to Open Vortex. It's going to start the download in Vortex. It'll pop up right here in the top right with Install and just do Enable. It's like just downloading new mods for the first time and it should be working and remove script errors in the case of Cyber Engine Tweaks. If you're still getting script errors after updating certain mods, that just means there's even more mods you need to update. Make sure, by the way, that in the dashboard section of Vortex, scroll down to around here. You'll see this card where it says Red Mod Auto Convert. Make sure that's selected to yes. It'll help you a lot with your mods. Now, downgrading your game from 2.0 or Phantom Liberty to one of the previous patches is kind of a difficult process, but I'm going to point you guys in the right direction with a couple of articles down below. One is for GOG Galaxy and one is for Steam. If you guys follow the steps in these articles, you should be able to recover your game files at a previous version, which will allow you to perform the next step, which is copying all of your game files to a different folder so that it doesn't get corrupted by the 2.0 update. Now this solution requires that you have enough space on one of your computer drives to copy and move the entire Cyberpunk game folder and your mods. By separating your game files from Steam or GOG, it will ensure that Steam can't force update your game to 2.0. Do this if you're super attached to your character and the old patch 1.63. Your main set of files then can be purged in your Steam directory and updated to 2.0 if you want to start new while still having these backed up files if you want to play on 1.63 with your old character. To begin, we want to head over to our Cyberpunk 2077 directory. I like to keep it linked on my desktop for ease of access when I'm modding, but the location will be found in the description or you can look on screen right now. Literally all you have to do to back up all these files since every single mod is installed in here is control A, control C, and then head to a new folder where you want to copy these files. I have it on my secondary drive right here, a cyberpunk backup folder, and I'm just going to paste it in. Again, your file size might be huge, mine is like 68 gigs, 
which means it's going to take a little while to copy over. So now that the files have copied over, it's pretty simple to start your game without going through Steam. You just have to go to the bin folder x64 and launch right here from the exe file. I'll show you right now just to prove that it does actually work. Cool, so the game is launched and I'm pretty sure that my mods work considering my character is wearing a completely modded outfit, so that's great to know. Finally, if you want to set up a profile to launch from in Vortex, all you have to do is copy this exact copied files location by right clicking up here on this x64 and go to copy address as text. We're going to go over here on the plus sign and we're going to create a new file. I'm going to set the target right here. This is the target location and I'm going to do another backslash and we're going to copy the exact name of the cyberpunk 2077.exe. I'm going to highlight everything right there and I'm going to place it at the end of the target line. In the command line, you can do slash modded. I'm going to click save and prove to you again that this should work. There we go. We are in game. So you got a profile set up as well. Going for the scorched earth method of purging all of your files and deleting everything is vital if you want to play Cyberpunk 2.0 and Phantom Liberty on a new save without any issues, without any mod conflicts, without your game breaking. It's also super easy and related to the previous method of what we did earlier when we copied and moved all of our files. To begin, we're going to want to go to where we have Cyberpunk installed, whether it's on Steam or GOG, and we're going to uninstall it. I'm going to go to manage, uninstall and of course uninstall our game. Once the uninstallation process is complete, we wanna head back over to our Cyberpunk 2077 directory. Again, I have it linked on my desktop, but the location will be shown on screen right now. The remaining files that you see here are just remnants of Vortex and some of the mods that you might have installed. We wanna delete these too so that they don't have any incompatibility with Phantom Liberty or Cyberpunk 2.0. I'll just prove to you right now, if I go to the mods tab, it has all my mods remaining here still, which is uh, kinda sad. So we're going to highlight everything here and I'm just going to delete now if you look the old cyberpunk folder is completely empty you can now reinstall the game and it will not have any mods in it create a new profile it's pretty simple go to the profiles tab on vortex and we're going to add cyberpunk 2077 profile i'm just going to add a new profile i'm going to call it cyberpunk phantom liberty and click save. And then of course, if you had an old profile, uh, you know, that was managing the mods you literally just deleted, you just gotta go and enable the Phantom Liberty profile instead. If we look at this Phantom Liberty profile, you'll see everything is grayed out and disabled. That basically just means that the game's no longer detecting any mods because we literally deleted all the mod files. That's a good thing. If you just wanna get rid of all these records, you can literally highlight everything, click remove, click delete archive. This might take a few minutes, but it really shouldn't take that long because the mods don't actually exist, right? And if it looks like some of these mods remain, there's just some, issues with red mod i guess just keep deleting until they disappear of course if you backed up your game to an alternate folder like earlier you should still be able to launch it right here on this dashboard if you want to play patch 1.63 with mods otherwise if you didn't do that process and you're just playing on phantom livery you have an empty mod slot here now that you can start putting mods into and if you guys need a guide for installing mods that's comprehensive and super awesome i've got a video that i'm going to be uploading on my channel very soon the link will pop up on screen or you can check the description below the Appearance Change Unlocker mod lets you save your character's preset in-game and then export it to a file on your computer. This is great if you want to create a backup of your character's appearance or you want to note down what your appearance looks like so when you make a new save on Phantom Liberty you can then load up the character preset or you can, you know, mark down what presets you used on a Google Doc. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Of course, you need to have the Appearance Change Unlocker mod installed and I'm going to give that link down in the description below as well. It's only compatible for 1.63 at the time that I'm filming this video but using the steps shown previously in this video you should be able to figure out you know either how to downgrade your game to that taking a look at your presets and saving them is pretty simple with this mod all you have to do is head into your apartment and go straight to the mirror go down to the change appearance option and load it up right here you can basically take a look at everything you've chosen for your character thus far and if you go to the left side right here you can name the preset to whatever you want i'm going to name it tutorial we're going to save the character preset and it'll be saved to game files which i'll show you how to access right now in the description section of the appearance change unlocker they show you the exact file path where your presets are going to be saved but i'll show you right now as well i'm in the cyberpunk directory folder or at least my backup version i'm going to go to bin x64 we're going to go to plugins cyber engine tweaks we're going to go to mods and we're going to go to appearance change unlocker character presets and female Right here, the tutorial preset is saved. You can copy and back this file up anywhere outside of the directory in the case that your directory accidentally gets deleted or whatever the fuck. 
I don't know. And then you can load this up on Cyberpunk 2.0 once the appearance change unlocker is updated to get your character set up. The last thing that I highly recommend you do is create your own mod list that you can keep track of on something like Google Docs. What I like about Google Docs is that I can then publish my entire mod list to the web and share it with people to access without them finding out what the f my Gmail is. It's great to keep track of every single mod that you install, especially the ones that you manually install, and then leave a link to their Nexus mods page so that when you need to update them, it's very easy to find using like, say, Control F and then going down and finding that link. As I'm only human, there are likely issues and solutions that I could have missed when making this video. If you have questions or concerns, please leave them down in the comments and I will try my absolute best to respond and help with troubleshooting. If you guys are interested in hilarious, dashing, and super cool content from yours truly, check out my recent Starfield video. And as always, have a good one.